Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. And let's get started. Now we do have this equation x to the fifth power minus y to the fifth power is 1993. And we're looking for integer solutions. So this is a Diophantine equation in two variables and it's a quintic equation as well. Okay, so there's a couple methods that we can use to solve Diophantine equations and I'm planning to do a video in two or three days uh, on Diophantine equations, how to solve them. I'll give you some examples and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Now, this one is actually factorable. So we can go ahead and factor x to the fifth minus y to the fifth. How do we factor that? As you know, uh, if n is an integer, x to the nth minus y to the nth is always factorable. If it's odd and if it's a plus sign, it's also factorable. So this expression here can be factored as, first of all, notice that it's divisible by x minus y, right? And then the other factor is going to look like this. First of all, we're going to think, okay, what am I supposed to multiply x by to get x to the fifth? It should be x to the fourth. Now, here's how you form all the terms in the second factor. First of all, you're going to start with the highest power of x, which is x to the fourth in this case. And then every term, the power of x is going to go down one by one. And then the power of y is going to go up by one. In the first term of the second factor, there's no y, which because it's y to the power zero. And since the original sign is minus sign, the first factor is going to have a minus sign. So you're going to have x minus y. In the second factor, everything is going to be a plus sign. Okay, so it's kind of easy. The sign is not going to alternate. So having said that, let's go ahead and factor this. So the second term is going to be x to the third and you have to introduce the y. One thing to remember how this goes is also looking at the sum of powers. The sum of the powers should always add to four. So this is kind of like the binomial theorem without the binomial coefficients. Okay, that's the only difference basically in the second factor that you're gonna have pretty much the same structure, but you're not gonna have the binomial coefficients like n choose r. Okay, now the next term is gonna be, you have to reduce the power of x and increase the power of y. So it's gonna be x squared, y squared. And from symmetry, you can tell that it's going to be the term in the middle and then things are going to be reversed. Then you'll have x, y to the third. So x and y are going to switch roles basically to the right and to the left. And then finally, you're going to have y to the fourth. Now, if you go ahead and distribute this, you're going to notice that x to the fifth minus y to the fifth uh, is basically factorable this way. Okay, cool. Now, what is so good about factoring this expression? Well, it's going to make the solution easier. Now, we can kind of break it down into different cases. So here's the plan. First of all, we need to notice that 1993, I believe it was a competition problem uh, back in 1993, probably. And this number is prime. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. It has no other divisors than one or itself. So that's a good thing. If you have a prime number, which can only be factored in a limited way, then it's good because we're not going to have a lot of cases. So there are two cases, basically. First of all, notice that x to the fifth minus y to the fifth is positive, which means, this, which means that x to the fifth is greater than y to the fifth, which implies that x is greater than y. So x minus y is also going to be positive, which indicates that the other factor is also going to be positive. Okay, make sense? Cool. Now, what are the options? We have two cases here, okay? The first case, let's start with the seemingly easier one. Uh, x minus y is equal to one. Since the product is prime, if one, of the, one of the factors has to be one. Okay, so suppose x minus y is equal to one. Now, what does that give us? Let's see. If x minus y is equal to one, then this means that x is equal to y plus one. Nice, okay. Now, what does this mean? It means that x and y are integers and x is one more than y. So for example, if y is equal to one, then x is equal to two. If uh, x is equal to 10, then y is equal to nine, and then so on and so forth. So th they differ by one, okay? Cool. Now, we can go ahead and substitute 
this expression into the original one. Since x can be written as y plus 1, then this expression turns into y plus 1 to the fifth power minus y to the fifth power. So what's so nice about it is that this is difference of fifth powers, but you don't have to worry about it. You can just use the binomial theorem and expand it. And when you expand it, you're going to notice something interesting. Let's do it. So this is going to be, okay, the coefficients for the fifth row of the Pascal's triangle is going to be 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1, right? Okay, cool. So what is this going to look like when I expand it? Well, it's going to look like this. y to the fifth plus 10y to the fourth. And then, uh, of course, when I... Uh, the, when the other factor is 1, you don't have to worry about it. So it's just going to be 1 all the time. So you can just focus on y, basically. And that's not a 10. How on earth did I write 10 there? Okay. Uh, so it's going to be 5y to the 4th. And then you're going to have 10y cubed plus 10y squared plus 5y plus 1. Remember that the coefficients are 1, 5, 10, 10, 5. And where do they come from? They come from basically 5 choose 1, 5 choose 2, 5 choose 3, which is the same as uh, 5 choose 2, by the way. And then 5 choose 4, which is the same as 5 choose 1. And this is 5 choose 0. And this is 5 choose 5. So a little bit of combinations. Okay. So this is my expression. And then, of course, I have to subtract y to the fifth, which is the critical part. Now, y to the fifth cancels out, leaving us with this gigantic expression, which you don't have to worry much about. But here's the crucial fact. If you look at this expression here, you notice that it is a multiple of 5. If you don't see it, you can just pull out a 5 here and see it with your own eyes like this. Okay. Are you convinced now that this is a multiple of 5 plus 1? Now, so what is so significant about this is that, you know, sometimes to solve Diophantine equations, again, I'm going to do a video on how to solve techniques, strategies, and some good examples which I picked for you. So we're going to do that in two or three days. I believe we're going to do it in two days, I'm guessing. Um, two days from today, I believe we can do that. Why not, right? I mean, not, why wait? Okay, so this is a multiple of five plus one. So what is that supposed to mean? It means that this expression is equal to, or I should say congruent to, you know, some technical people are going to say, like, that's not the right word. If you say equal to, okay, that's congruent to 1 mod 5. So what about it? I mean, this expression, which is basically the whole thing, right? I plugged in this expression in here so that it's equal to what? 1993. Well, this is interesting, right? So this is equal to 1993, right? Okay. Since it's the whole thing. Well, if you look at 1993 mod 5, it is congruent to 3 mod 5. So, what this means is that if x minus y is equal to 1, then the left-hand side, the left-hand side of my original equation is 1 mod 5, but the right-hand side is 3 mod 5. But this is impossible. Since two things are equal, they have to leave the same rem remainder upon division by 5. So, this tells us that uh, we don't get any solutions for x minus y is equal to 1. So we have no solutions from here. Okay, cool. That's fine. That means that the first case fails, and we're going to look at the second case. What's the second case? The second case is x minus y equals 1993, right? I mean, obviously, there are infinitely, infinitely many numbers for which this is true. There are infinitely many integers for which this is true. Okay, you want 1994 and 1, 1995 and 2, so on and so forth. There are infinitely many pairs. But is that going to satisfy the whole equation? How do we check that? Well, this implies that because we were able to factor this expression x to the fifth minus y to the fifth, right, as x minus y multiplied by the other thing, which was x to the fourth, this expression. Let me go ahead and write that down again one more time x to the fourth plus x cubed y plus x squared y squared plus x y cubed plus y to the fourth. Remember the symmetry without the binomial coefficients. Now, if you say that this is equal to 1993, you're basically saying that because the whole thing is equal to 1993, you're basically implying or saying that this expression is equal to 1. So that's the point that we're going to move from. So we're going to look at that expression now and see if we can get any solutions. Because the first one gives us 
possible solutions. Yes, they're infinitely many, but they also satisfy, I mean, they also have to satisfy the second equation. And what is the second equation? The x to the fourth one. So let's go ahead and write it down. x to the fourth plus x cubed y plus x squared y squared plus xy cubed plus y to the fourth. And we're saying that this needs to equal 1. Having said that, this one is equal to 19, 93. So we have to have both. Then we'll have some solutions, hopefully. Okay, let's see how this goes. Now, this expression, can this expression equal 1? How am I going to know, right? I mean, there are infinitely many possibilities. I, can, I can't really test them out. And this is a quartic equation and there are two variables. It's just crazy. But we can use, take advantage of another technique or strategy, which we a lot of times use with Diophantine equations and any equation in algebra, basically. Inequalities. How do you use inequalities? Here's how we can use it. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and lump these terms together. Or in other words, I'm going to kind of isolate or maybe put aside, whatever you want to call that, this term in the middle, x squared, y squared. Why am I separating it from the crowd? Because now I do get a factorable expression. And factoring, again, plays an important role in solving equations. Of course, inequalities also play an important role. Now, this expression is factorable. And if I take out an x cubed, I should be getting x plus y. And then if I take out a y cubed, I should be getting x plus y again, which makes it factorable. And then I have this x squared, y squared. So don't worry about that. We'll handle that later. Now, what is critical here is that we have x plus y multiplied by x cubed plus y cubed, and then plus x squared, y squared is equal to 1. Nice. What am I going to do with this? Well, can this equal 1? I still don't know, right? But one thing that you can do is I have a sum of two cubes. So what I can do here is I can actually take this expression and factor it. And when I factor it, I should be getting something like this, x plus y multiplied by x plus y again. And the other factor, remember, is x squared minus xy plus y squared. Maybe uh, on uh, one day we can do a video on factoring polynomials but because as, as you notice that in a lot of these problems, we take advantage of factoring formulas, identities, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and put these together. X plus y multiplied by itself is going to generate, uh-oh, x plus y quantity squared, okay? And then multiply by this quantity, now, notice that we're getting some perfect squares here. What's so good about getting perfect squares is that they allow you to designate some upper or lower bounds because you know that a square cannot be negative. So that's going to give you some bounds for this number. Okay, which will make it easier to solve this equation because we have one equation and two variables. Okay, so now x plus y squared is obviously non-negative. x squared y squared is also non-negative. What about x squared minus xy plus y squared? Okay, if you look at that equation quadratically, is that a word? Okay, probably. If you look at that equation quadratically from a quadratic equation perspective, you'll notice that the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, is less than zero, which means that this equation cannot be zero. It's a parabola that doesn't intersect the x-axis, so it's either always positive or always negative. But if you look at the leading coefficient, it's positive, therefore, this equation is always positive. You could also prove that by writing this as x squared minus xy plus y squared over 4 plus 3y squared over 4, and this expression is just going to be x minus y over 2 quantity squared, and this will be 3y squared over 4. Notice that this expression cannot be uh, negative or zero. Okay? It's impossible. Cool. Then what does this mean? This means that this expression here, actually, if you look at this expression, this sum, since this sum is non-negative, then this expression here, which is supposed to equal 1, right, plus x squared y squared, needs to be greater than or equal to x squared y squared, which is greater than 1. Now, why is that happening? Because if you look at x and y, we said that x and y are x is greater than y, x and y are non-negative, they're positive integers, and then x equals 1 did not work, x minus, one, uh, x minus y equals 1 did not work. So we now know that x squared, y squared is... Okay, so to keep a long story short, 
this expression right here is greater than 1, therefore it can never equal 1. What is that supposed to mean? It means that there are no solutions to this equation, unfortunately. Okay? Well, this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. And in two days, let's go ahead and tackle Diophantine equations. Or how about three days? Maybe we can do, okay, two days. Let's just set the date for two days. See you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe and take care. Bye-bye.